if you looked at the detection system and thought, what's going on here? Don't worry, the situation's under control. It's time for you to learn. First, we'll go over what each component does, and then I'll show you how to build it. The detection equipment will need processing power in order to work, and that's where the general purpose processing card comes in. Each card provides one unit of processing power. The amount of processing power your equipment will need is dependent on how much and what type of equipment you're using. Without the proper amount of processing power for your detection equipment, it won't function properly. And you can see how much processing power a tracker or detector uses here. The intra-vehicle transmitter allows your ships to share targeting information between each other. This is good for redundancy, so if one ship's detection equipment is all taken out, it can just feed information from other ships and use their targeting data. This would also be good for a drone that doesn't have much room for detection equipment. Every vehicle that you want to share targeting information will need one of these. Detection equipment is split into two sections, the detectors and the trackers. The detectors spot the enemy and then transfer that information over to the trackers, which provide much more accurate bearing and range estimates. A few of these can see through glass blocks, which will let you blend them in with your hull a little better. Those being the retro reflection sensor, the cameras, the laser rangefinder, and the coincidence rangefinders. Passive equipment like the passive sonar and passive radar allow your craft to listen for hostile ships with active radar and active sonar without giving its own position away. Now giving your position away to the enemy isn't really that big of a deal since the enemy will already be able to spot you. And as of now, there's currently no way to really stealth your ship, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. They can also help detect incoming torpedoes and missiles, and the passive sonar can detect sonar-guided torpedoes, and the passive radar can detect radar-guided missiles. The wireless snooper lets your craft pick up signals given off by wireless transmitters, receivers, and the intra-vehicle transceiver on enemy craft. The retro-reflection sensor looks for enemy cameras, so the Camera 360, Camera 90, and the Camera Gimbal Tracker, as well as the telescope. The cameras are like ordinary cameras and look for enemy craft. They have a good bearing accuracy, but have a poor range accuracy. The IR cameras find the enemy based on their heat signature, or how much heat they give off. So the more heat an enemy craft gives off, the more likely they'll be detected. The IR cameras pretty much have the exact same range and bearing accuracy as normal cameras. The sonar and radar work pretty much exactly the same, except the sonar sends out pulses underwater and the radar sends out pulses above water. The laser rangefinder uses a laser to determine the range and bearing of a target. It's much better at finding the range than it is the bearing, but the bearing error isn't too bad. Now the difference between the 360 degree, the 90 degree, and the trackers is that the 360 degree components have the worst range and bearing estimates, and then the 90 degree components have better range and bearing estimates, and then the trackers have the best bearing and range estimates. For example, with the 360 degree camera, you can see the angular error and bearing, which is just the bearing estimate, is 0.8 degrees. The 90 degree camera is 0.2 degrees, and the camera gimbal tracker is 0.05 degrees. And you can see the same thing with the range estimates. The 360 degree camera has a 12.5% error. The 90 degree camera has a 10% error. And the camera gimbal tracker has an 8% error. The radar buoy works above water or floating on top of it. And the sonar buoy works floating on top of the water or below it. To set them up, you'll need to connect them to your AI. Now the number of buoys you can launch is dependent on how many buoy holders you have. For example, if you have two buoy holders, you can only launch two missiles with buoys on them. Once you've placed the buoy holders, then you can move over to your missiles and place what buoys you want on them. The coincidence rangefinders are very similar to the laser rangefinder, but use two lasers instead of one and they get more accurate the longer they are. So the 9 meter one has a much lower range error as compared to the 5 meter one, which is 2%, and the 9 meter is 1.1 repeating. Now you'll see you have armored and unarmored. Obviously the armored ones have more health and a higher armor value. Now we'll move on to placing the detection equipment. There are two different ways to connect your AI detection equipment to your AI. 
The first by connecting it physically, either by directly attaching it to your AI or through connectors. The other being wirelessly with transmitters and receivers. If your craft have multiple AI, don't worry about it, the AI detections will be shared across them. When a component is connected to the AI, it'll be highlighted in blue, and when it's not connected, it'll be highlighted in red. When you hover over the mainframe or a general processing card, you'll see how much processing power your mainframe has access to, as well as how many detectors and trackers you have, and how much processing power the trackers and detectors need. If you hover over your detection equipment, you can see if its line of sight is being blocked by something. In this case, the camera is being blocked on its left by the wireless transmitter. Now with all that said, what components should you actually use? On most of my ships, I use the wireless snooper, an intra-vehicle transceiver, 360 camera, camera gimbal tracker, 90 degree radar, radar tracker, passive radar, sonar, passive sonar, and the laser rangefinder. Now the reasoning for the wireless snooper and the intra-vehicle transceiver is that the wireless snooper lets your ship have at least a basic idea of where the enemy is at all times, and the intra-vehicle transceiver mainly helps with redundancy. If one of your ships loses all of its sensors, it can still use the information from your other ships to engage targets. Out of all the detectors, the cameras have the highest chance of spotting the enemy, so the trackers can begin tracking. You want to try to give it the best view possible, so in my case, I've placed it as high up as I can. The camera gimbal trackers have the highest bearing accuracy of any of the detection equipment. The biggest downsides to the cameras is that they're affected by weather, nighttime, and smoke. You'll notice in really stormy conditions or at night, the cameras will lose their effectiveness, as well as if the enemy's shooting smoke at you or you're shooting smoke at the enemy. Since nighttime really only lasts like 30 seconds anyway, the biggest problem you're going to face is weather and smoke but that's why we have the other detectors. The 90 degree radar can be placed in the hull of your ship, giving it slightly more protection. Placing two of these on either side of your hull can give you at least one backup detector that has a small chance of getting taken out because it's less vulnerable. If you wanted to, you could also place these on your turrets. Now the radar gimbal trackers there as backup for our laser rangefinder and our camera gimbal trackers. In case there's a lot of smoke or in bad weather, the radar will be able to see through that. Now the main reason why I have some of my detection equipment on my turrets is that they're on a high point on the turrets and that they have a clear line of sight out of the vehicle. Whereas if I were to put them, you know, on the hull, they would be in the way of the turrets rotating or shooting. Most enemy vehicles will have an active radar, so the passive radar will easily spot them. They can also pick up incoming enemy radar guided missiles for your anti-missile system, which is why I have them on my ship here. The sonar will pick up any enemy vehicles in the water, but its main purpose is detecting subs. The passive sonar helps pick up enemy ships using sonar and incoming torpedoes for my lambs to engage. And lastly, the laser rangefinder, which has the highest range accuracy of any of the detection equipment, and it's virtually unaffected by any type of weather. But remember, it is affected by smoke, and that's why we have the radar trackers. Lastly, something I didn't mention was the Coincidence Rangefinders. They do a decent job at range and bearing estimation, whereas the other components, at least some of the other components, they're either only really good at the range estimation or the bearing estimation. One last thing is you can change the automatic detection accuracy. This is basically how accurate the detections on an enemy craft are without any detection equipment. You can do this by going into Options, Config, and then here you'll see the detection slider. So if you click override, you can select how accurate your guns are without any detection equipment at all. One being the most accurate and be pinpoint accuracy and you won't need detection equipment. And zero being you'll definitely need detection equipment. Hopefully this video demystified the detection equipment for you. If you need help or have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below. I'll try to reply as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching.